Hello everyone, George here again, and we're back to working with our Vive input class. If you missed the last video, you really need to go back and check it out if you plan on implementing anything like this. What we're doing here is using the OpenVR uh, aspect of Unity instead of the Steam VR plugin now. And because of that, we need to implement our own class, which I've called Vive Input. In the last video, we went through and added all of the different uh, axes and buttons necessary in our player input field. But now we need to actually go into code and start working with that area. And the way this is going to work is right now we've got our class. We've got our uh, somewhat like a singleton class, as, as much of a singleton as we can create in Unity, I guess. But the idea now is for us to create a, a method that is going to continually check um, the states of things. And the idea here is that other classes, that is other um, no, scripts we create can register with these events. And whenever this event occurs, they'll automatically fire off for us. If you're not familiar with delegates or events, I really highly recommend that you go and check out Unity's website. They've got a wonderful tutorial on events and delegates and how to use them in your own work. And it's, it's better than I'm going to be able to present to you here. But Hopefully, if you watch this and you still don't understand what they really do, you'll get a vague understanding of how you can use them. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, actually create a method that is going to be called uh, every time an update. And this method is going to be a protected void. And I'm going to call this check controller. Let's see, check controller. Controller. Wow, I can't spell. Con controller events. There we go. What we're going to do is literally do everything that you're normally used to inside of Unity with input. Um, when you have a button, you have a, a button down, a button up, or you just have a button state, that kind of thing. We're going to create all those different methods inside of here for us to do checking with. Uh, and that's going to come shortly. I just wanted to write this function down so you have an idea of why check controller events is going to happen. We're going to create all of our delegates. We're going to create our, our events and then check controller events will be called with an update. So we'll do check controller events here. And it's going to check the state of each and every one of those uh, buttons or and so forth. And if it works, guess what? It it's going to fire off a method for us. That is our delegate or excuse me, our event. And then everyone else inside of our event is going to get notified that this occurred. And that's the real important thing here. You subscribe. And then when an event happens, you get told about that event. You don't have to continually poll because this Vive input class is doing all the polling for you. Therefore, all of your other scripts don't have to waste time continually polling. We've got the check controller event class. We've got it in our update class. But now we actually need the events and delegates that are going to make this all happen. So let's go ahead and go to the top of our uh, class here and start actually implementing all of them. So first we're going to do our delegates. I'm going to do a couple delegates so you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here and then we're going to go from there. Now when I originally implemented this uh, in another project I was working on, a uh, horror game, the idea was that I had made them all public static and that turned out to be a huge problem. Um, it turns out inside of Unity, when you switch from scene to scene, everything gets reset except for static variables. And rather than deal with these static variables not getting reset, I just decided to make them um, members of the instance in instead. All right, so now why don't we go ahead and create some of these delegates and events that we actually need to make things work. So the way I'm going to do this is actually create the uh, buttons for everything that we work with. And I'm also going to create accessor methods for all of the different axes as well. But for right now, why don't we go ahead and start with the simple stuff. And that is, of course, starting with the button left menu uh, and up and down and then everything else for that matter. So let's do public delegate. And I'm going to do a void return type and we'll do button left menu. OK, now we're going to do a public delegate void and we want to handle all the cases. So the first case is what is the case of the button itself? The next case is button down left menu. And of course, hopefully, if you understand what I'm doing, the next one is public delegate void button up left menu. So now we have the ability to access all of the different changes that are going to occur. 
Now we need to create the events for this. We're just going to do a public event and the type is going to be our delegate type. So it'll be a button left menu to start with. And we're gonna preface every name with an on. So button left menu now becomes on button left menu. Same thing with the other following two we have remaining. So button down left menu and on button down left menu. Public event button up left menu and on button up left menu. And we don't want parentheses. Uh, sorry, got a little carried away there. Now that we have this template done, we're going to jump down into the actual controller event section and implement that so that any of you who know what's really going on can go ahead and do that. So let's do an if input dot get key down and that is going to be key code dot and then these are where you need to remember what the key codes are for each of these. Right now we're dealing with the, what is it, uh, button left menu. So over here we have all the squeezes. Where is the menu? Horizontal, horizontal, squeeze, horizontal, horizontal. There's menu at the top. So let's make them bigger so I know which button we're dealing with. And we can go down to key code dot. And for the left controller button, we want to do key code dot joystick button. And by the way, you notice that I'm doing joystick button, not joystick with a number in between it, because we're dealing with all potential joysticks with this. So it's joystick button, and then we want to do, according to this, two. So let's put a two on the end, and there we go. So if this particular thing happens, we're going to want to fire off our event. So if our event is not equal to null, so on button, and that's going to be uh, on button down left menu does not equal to null. And the reason you check to see if it's null is because if no one has to subscribe to that event, the event itself will be null. So you need to do a check for that to begin with. And then we need to do an on button down left menu call right there. And we're done. Anyone who subscribes to that event is then going to be informed about it. And that's pretty, that's pretty much it. We're going to do the same thing, of course, for the uh, for for the other three implementations of it. So instead of on, so input get key, key down will be get key up, and then just get key. And we want to grab the same button, and instead of, um, and instead of on button down, we're just going to be on button up. Up up and up up. Please, thank you very much. And this one's just going to be on button. And that's going to return a true or false value based upon the state at that particular time. And sometimes this is actually uh, useful depending upon what you're doing. So on button, I'm sorry, left menu. There we go. And left. All right. And that's literally how I'm going to go ahead and set up every single delegate and event for all of the other buttons at the moment. So if you want to, feel free to skip ahead in the video. I'm not going to fast forward anything just in case you're the person who wants to follow me uh, through every step. All right, so with the menu button done, we need to do the rest of them. And all we've done is the left one, so now we need to go ahead and do the right one. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste the rest of these. This is gonna be a lot faster than what I started with. We're gonna do a right, and I'm actually gonna just grab that bit right there, copy it and start pasting it here and here, and you, you, and you. Great, much faster. And of course, the same thing inside of here, right, right, and right. And I can go down now and grab all of this stuff. And sometimes I do like to put comments in here, so let's do menu left for that. Copy this and paste, and let's do menu right. R-I-G-H-T, 
we'll take a look at our right value over here. And of course, we're dealing with button zero. So let's make sure that's being triggered properly. So button zero, oops, and zero, and zero, great. Uh, and the lefts need to be turned into rights. And we should be done after that. So U, whoops, I copied that. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's do a, pay, a copy and then a paste. Copy and da, 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 write U, U, and you're done. And U, and U, save, all right. Those buttons are done. Let's move on to something else besides the menu now. So next up is the trackpad. So I'm once again going to cheat. I'm gonna grab all of this stuff just to make my typing fewer, my, well, my typing strokes fewer. And we're gonna do button left trackpad. Button left and trackpad. Copy that because we're lazy. And we're gonna paste that there. And we're gonna paste that. There's the return type and on button left Track and track and trackpad. Great. Now we need to do the same thing for the right trackpad. So literally we can grab, uh oh, wait, I need to add a parenthesis there. Great. Now we grab the entire thing there and we're going to paste it again. And everything that needs to change is, of course, the right, or that is the left to right portion. So copy and paste. And whoops, paste and paste, paste, paste. Great, save, and we're done with that. Uh, let's see, what, what's next? So we got the trackpad done, now we need the... We need the touches next. So let's grab all of this again, paste, and we start right up here. So button left trackpad touch. I might need to go back and change these names a tiny bit because I believe they're slightly different inside of my input area over here. So actually let's take a look at that and fix it right now. So I have, um, I have presses and I have touches, right? So these are touches, which means these are presses. So I need to add a press to the beginning of each of them. So that's menu, that's left button trackpad, so let's do a press at the beginning of each of these. And you, 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 and you. Yes, yes, and yes, please, maybe. Okay, very good. One, two, three, four. We've got four left, so let's go ahead with that. So button left, trackpad, touch and add that to all the remainder. So button down, left trackpad touch, and that as well. And then of course we have the rights for each one. There we go, there we go, and there we go. Copying names, whoops. Let's copy those names over. And the same thing down here. It's a lot harder sometimes to, uh, let's see, on button trackpad, and then we need touch on the end, don't we? Let's grab that. So control C, V, 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 and control V, 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 V. And there we are. So now we have all the trackpad stuff. Next up are our trigger values. So let's go ahead and do another paste, right? Grab all of this stuff, control C. I'm just gonna give me a little bit of room so I know where the paste begins and ends. And we need to do a button right trigger. So button right trigger. And of course now we have to deal with button down right trigger. And you know what? Let's do this part here, that part there, and you there. And we need to do the same thing here, which will be a on button right trigger. Okay, those are, that's not done. That's 
got a H on the end. Okay, now we need to do on button right. Uh, we need to do left. I did right first. I should have done left, shouldn't I have? Um, and these return types are wrong, so let's paste them in there. There we are. So button right trigger, button right trigger H, which is not correct. That should be a down. That should be a down. And this should be a down. On button down right trigger, yes. Okay, I'm actually gonna nuke these two because I've already got things set up. And we're gonna grab, let's see. My, I'm doing a delegate event, right? So everything's perfect if I continue with that format. So we're gonna grab all of you, copy, and since I've been doing the lefts first, technically, I'll go into here, button, left. And why not copy that, find my rights, and replace them accordingly. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V, and left. All right, so that's my left trigger and my right trigger. And that's uh, that's it for the buttons. So in the next video, we're gonna pick up from here. I'm going to add all of these particular uh, events and delegate, or excuse me, events down into our uh, check events controller section. And hopefully we'll finish off all of the Vive input classes. And in the following video then, we're going to create a GUI element that will then allow us to check to make sure we did everything properly. And if we didn't, we'll go back in and make sure it's correct. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video. So long everyone, George out, goodbye.